Florida had won uh, 28 in a row at home. Florida's ranked number one in the nation and, uh, you know, one of the better better uh, programs in the entire country. So anytime you have to compete with that on the road, it's a, it's a tremendous challenge for a baseball team. And uh, I think our kids were excited by that opportunity and obviously uh, fought and scratched and clawed and found a way to win two ball games. I am here to tell you, this ballpark will play smaller than any ballpark we're playing this year. Why am I bringing that up? Because we're about to take BP and some of you guys are going to get fisted and balls are going to go a long way. If that stops our ability to get to the middle of the field like we just talked about against this guy, then we're affected by our surroundings. We're expecting big things, um, you know, going in on the road to a, a number one team. Uh, we're expecting, you know, to at least take two or three, uh, you know, falling in the first game. You know, it kind of fired us up and get, got us ready to uh, play the second two games uh, in that series. We knew it was going to be a, a, a tough road trip and, uh, you know, we just went in there with high hopes knowing that we were a good team and they were a good team and that uh, if we just stick to our game that felt like we would be all right. You guys were all out here. This pretty quick surface. It looks like it's a little damp surface right here. This infield, to me, I don't know about how our infielders felt, but it plays remarkably like ours when it's not wet. And they're putting water on it right now. But it was really dry when you guys were taking ground balls. It was loose on top. I don't know how firm it's going to be, but it seemed like it was fairly similar to ours. Pretty quick on the infield. I thought we made a good transition there. Guys, everything's exactly the same. We didn't defend as well as we wanted to on Friday, but I uh, thought Dakota Hudson really pitched well. He had a tough fifth inning, and I, I think he threw some quality pitches, and I think some balls just found some holes against him, and sometimes that happens. He pitches to contact, um, and he can get weak contact sometimes and still give up hits. Uh, uh, you know, Florida's a very good team. They, they really make you pitch, and, uh, you know, D Dakota, even though I think his stuff was very good, I think he had some things not really go his way. It's kind of the nature of the game, but, uh, we still competed. Uh, we, we had some nice performances offensively and defensively. And, uh, you know, more than anything, I don't think our kids let that uh, bother them at going into the, the Saturday, Sunday game. Friday was just kind of, we came out swinging the bats well and, you know, went out to like early 2 0 lead and felt like we were in a good position. And, um, you know, Dakota went out there and, you know, he battled real hard for us. And, you know, we appreciated that from him. And, you know, his stuff was good. And they just kind of squeaked a few balls through and just kind of didn't go our way on Friday. They had a few few hits in that one inning that just kind of busted it open for them. Um, but, you know, the way that we bounced back uh, the next two days, I think really uh, showed a lot about our character and about this team. Um, that even if, you know, we don't get it Friday, Friday night, we're going to get it done the next two nights. Let's get right back on the right track right now. Everybody's focused in, everybody's locked in, okay? Here we go. Yeah. Right. Guys on three, one, two, three, go! Our sport is so much like golf from the, the standpoint of you're really not competing against your opponent, you're competing against the golf course, you're competing against the game itself in baseball. Uh, that strike zone, you got to throw it into the strike zone. Whatever that umpire strike zone is on that day, you have to compete in that strike zone. Um, you have to uh, deal with the weather conditions. Is it a wet surface? Is the wind blowing out? All those things. Is wind blowing in? Uh, and I, I thought our kids really competed against the game itself and didn't make it about an opponent. On the pitch, and he hits it in the air towards right center. That's going to get in the gap and is going to be cut off on the edge of the warning track. One run has scored. Here comes another to the plate, and Collins will score, or rather Lowe will score. Collins will stop at third as Nathaniel Lowe follows Eli Marrero across the plate. We had a lot of guys step up for us, and, you know, it was kind of a different person every game, and, you know, that, that's the big thing for this team is that you never know who's going to be the guy on that day. And, you know, we had a lot of guys step up. Austin did a great job throwing, so did Rigby. You know, we had a lot of guys that stepped up for us. And uh, also with the bats, you know, Jake Mangum stayed hot and, uh, you know, he swung the bat real well and gave us a big chance. You know, I felt like every inning, uh, not only Jake, but just whoever led off the inning was a really big part because they, they put a good at bat together and uh, put us in a good situation to score. 
Uh, I thought, especially on Saturday, we, we did such a nice job of putting together some big innings early, supporting Austin Sexton. Austin went out and got us off to a good start, really competed well for us. Pitch to Brown. There's a drive to right field. That ball's well hit. That's back near the wall, at the wall, and it is gone for a grand slam, the second grand slam of the year for Cody Brown. It was a really special moment. You know, I've never hit a, a grand slam before in my life until this year, and I, that was actually my second, and, you know, it was, it was really special to me, uh, you know, going on the road at their place, you know, against a really good, you know, opponent, a good, a good pitcher. You know, it felt, it felt really good, and that came off my bat. Ryan Rigby trying to make a quality pitch here on a 2-2. The J.J. Schwartz. Rondi is ready, and here it comes. Rondi gets a ground ball right back to the mound, to the plate for one. The throw to first is in time, and they get the home to first. Double play, a huge, huge double play for Mississippi State. Ryan just keeps pouring that fastball in there with really good sink and deception. You know, most arm slot guys who, who throw from a lower arm slot or in the mid 80s, lower 80s, and he's a guy who goes 90, 91 from a, a lower arm slot with big time sink and uh, just, you know, the heart of a lion, a guy who really loves to go out there and compete. It's hard to pry the ball out of his hands. Uh, he wanted to finish that sucker and uh, he just did a great job. The rankings are what they are, and you know we we try not to uh, you know get caught up in all that. You know, as long as we just play our game that we know we can play, we're always gonna you know come out on top. You know, as long as we stay competitive, um, you know, grind out at bats, grind out um, you know strikes, and uh, you know throwing strikes and not letting runners get on by walks and everything like that. Um, you know, I, I feel like as long as we do that, um, we're we're pretty much unstoppable. The Sundays, the last three or four Sundays for us, it's been, it's been like this. You guys agree? It's like, man, we score some runs, they score some runs. We score some runs, they score some runs. Here's what I'm going to tell you. The reason why Sundays are about toughness is because the game is never over on Sundays. It's never over. We've studied video on them. We've studied their at-bats. We've watched their hitters. They're watching us. It's never over. So the reason why it's about toughness is because, man, your bodies maybe don't feel as great. There's tons of information, right? It's never over on Sundays. Keep going. Don't ever underestimate the importance of one run. If we got a chance to score a run, let's get our run. It doesn't have to be about the beginning all the time. One run is so crucial. Sundays, it's never over. This is baseball. One run is huge. Uh, so yeah, scoring runs is big. Denying runs is, is huge. But yeah, the, the one run difference is always a big deal, especially in this age of college baseball where it's a little bit of a toned down bat. It's a, um, it's a less offensive than it used to be and pitching is a little bit more dominant. You know, arm strength has gone up and the strength of the bats has kind of gone down. So we're in an age where, you're, you know, every run does count, but it really always has and it always will. Guys, we're going to keep running this marathon. If it takes us 12 hours to win this ball game, that's what we're going to do. Play behind those kind of guys, um, you know, they're filling up the strike zone, uh, you know, getting swing and miss, getting ground outs, lazy pop flies. Uh, you know, it's great to play behind those guys. You know, they keep you locked in throughout the game. Uh, you know, they're going to get it done. Each and every guy we put out there, we know that, uh, you know, they're going to get the job done. They're going to do their job, and we're going to do ours. I got the pitch. Long drive, deep to left field, back near the wall. It could go. It's off the fence and headed to second is Gridley, a stand-up double. They have an elevated fence, it looked like, and that ball hit in the fence behind. That may be a home run. Now they're going to send him on around the bases. It hit the recessed fence and bounced back onto the field of play, and the umpire, Randy Rockins, runs out there and says, hey, that is a home run for Ryan Gridley, and he circles the bases, and the Bulldogs have a lead in the ball game. Pitch coming. And ball driven in the air, right center field, make it down and will for a base hit. One run will score, everybody will uh, 
And now the ball gets loose, but the Bulldogs can't uh, find a way home. And that makes it a two to nothing ball game. It was the top of the order and another 2-2 pitch. And it's popped up, maybe a play, foul territory, lowest calling. He is there. The first baseman grabs it, and the inning is over. Boy, what a big, big pitch to make. And what a nice, nice job by Mississippi State's Reed Humphreys. Here's the pitch. And it's a high, long drive. And I don't think this one will probably stay in the yard. And it does not. And Alonzo hits a home run and makes it a two to one ball game. I just kind of wanted to throw it in the strike zone. I didn't want to walk anybody and wasn't really worried about giving up a home run. I knew nobody was on base and I was just going to try to shove it in there. And, you know, the guy put a good swing on it. And, you know, after that, it was just kind of like, I wasn't really worried about anything. I mean, we still had a 2-1 two, two lead and I was still going to do the same thing. And, and, you know, we kept doing it and it worked. Can Reed settle down and get the out after the home run and finish this ball game for Mississippi State. The wind up, and here it comes. Struck him out swinging. He does it, and the dogs win it. They beat the Florida Gators. They knock off the number one team in the country here on their home diamond, winning two out of three over the Gators in this ball game. Anytime you can go to the number one team's place and take two games, it's going to be big time for your confidence and for everyone on the team. And you know, I feel like that's going to help us going into this weekend. You know, Texas a and a great club, and we went to their place last year, and they were phenomenal. And, you know, we know they're a really good team, and, uh, you know, we just got to stay focused and keep doing our thing and not really worry about the rankings or any of that kind of stuff. Our kids always get excited about Super Bulldog weekend. It's a great tradition, maybe the greatest tradition in all of college baseball when you, you throw the whole thing in there and, of course, uh, you know, getting to go watch uh, a football team that has won 10 and 9 games in back-to-back -back years, that's pretty phenomenal as well. So all those folks are going to get a, a chance to go watch a, a big time football program in action and, and they're going to get to come watch two really, really good baseball programs. Texas A&M, who's been ranked number one or the top five most of the year, um, and Mississippi State, who's won four series in a row. I think it's going to be a great series. You have uh, two schools that wear a lot of maroon and uh, and both shared the A&M uh, label at one point in time in, in the history of the school. But there's a lot of similarities there. Uh, very well coached team. Uh, ho hopefully we'll have great weather and big crowds and, uh, and just have a lot of fun with this. Cole Gordon, I'm from Tampa, Florida. My favorite superhero is Thor. I have a few nicknames that go by Boomer, The Boz, Gordy, Freezer, and uh, I really like to dance. You can catch me dancing basically anywhere. I also love America. Cole Gordon, I would say um, one of the more famous people on this team, despite your very short time at Mississippi State, between the mullet and the bandana. You have, I don't want to call you a phenomenon, but like you're right on the cusp of it. <laughs> the mullet. I guess the way I'm going to ask this is uh, why? <laughs> um, I, had, I had the long hair obviously before when the season was starting. Um, the guys in the locker room, they, they weren't really feeling it, you know, they didn't like it. They thought it looked scraggly and whatnot. I thought it looked great. Thank you. I, I did too, but apparently I was one of many few. <laughs> but um, so I told them if we swept Oregon, they were coming in a highly ranked team that I'd cut it, get a haircut, look normal, be a normal person. I see you so do that. yeah, so we played really well. Apparently on Sunday, they obviously all wanted me to have it cut, and I went over to Jacob Robson's house, and he yeah, was here. He cuts hair. Yeah, he's a great hair cutter. So I was figuring yeah. I'm gonna get a nice haircut, and so he starts going, and then he goes, all right, just go look at that. So I go and go into his bathroom, look in the mirror, and he he left a mullet on the back of my hair. And I started laughing. I came out, and uh, Nate Lowe and Gridley, and they were all there. They were laughing, like, just leave it. This was Wednesday before our Vanderbilt series. 
And it just so happened that Friday I got a chance to hit in Vanderbilt, ended up getting a hit, and we won the game. Ended up taking the series from them. And it kind of exploded from there with the team. They're like, you can't cut it. And then we come out the next weekend, and we win the next weekend. And then I put racing stripes in it. I got a couple yeah, pin those look good, by yeah, a couple yeah. pinch running opportunities. I figured I might as well look fast. They're going to put me in there to run. So put the stripes in there. Told Coach Johnson he liked it. So it's been going from there. I said the bandana. That was that was. Have you always been wearing that, or I? Because I'm going to be honest. I never paid attention to you until I saw the mullet. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I was a headband guy before to mm -hmm. keep the hair back, and uh, I figured the mullet was really American. You know, it was really agree. Like you look at that, you don't think of European. You don't think of anything. You just think that's just some hard-nosed American. So I hear you don't watch it. No, I don't. Um, That's pretty gross. But I, I have, I have, a, I have a plan where I wear a headband when I'm sweating and doing that kind of stuff. But when I'm just watching and stuff, I keep it nice and dry and clean. And when we get back in the locker room, have a little shrine for it. I put it back up into the thing so it can <laughs> dry out and look nice. I would imagine, as superstitious as everyone is, that there's no chance anyone's letting you change anything up, even if you wanted to. Mm -mm. I've, I've actually gotten a few trims from Robbie, and every time I ask him if I can get a haircut, he, he says just the top, right? Like he won't, he doesn't even touch the bottom. He might, he might comb it or something like that, but he's, he don't put any scissors or anything back there. You can keep it business-like, but you gotta right. have the party in the back. Right. Yeah, no, I, I just, it's for the other team to know too. The front means we're here to take care of business, and the back means we're gonna have a fun time doing it. Speaking of the other team, uh, I, I did want to say there was a moment against old. Miss. They had a mullet in their dugout. You guys had like a mullet off or a stare. What, tell me about that. Right. He he thought he was going to have a mullet off. He didn't he didn't really realize what he was getting into. Uh, clearly. They uh, Eli's walkout song came on. I didn't even know they had a guy with a mullet. Obviously he wasn't he wasn't rocking it right. Um, so we I have a little dance move I do when Eli's walkout song comes on. You know, it gets a little hype. It's I've seen it. It's nice. Yeah. No. It's 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 good song. So I, I felt like I had to do something for it. He, he deserves it. Picking such a good walkout song. I started dancing and then I'm going and I can't, I don't really know what's going on when I start dancing. And Vance and them are saying, he's dancing with you, he's dancing, you gotta beat him. So I was like, oh man, I'm going. So I kept going harder. And they said he stopped and we got up and it was kind of a, it was kind of a big deal. It was like, we won another game against Ole Miss, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Not only did we win the series. Basically you know, win but, three and one on the right, weekend. exactly. As an appreciation to America, to your mullet, right. uh, to the bandana. I thought we could list our favorite things about America. I've got some poster board okay. and I've got markers. Do not, don't, don't let me see yours. I won't let okay. you see mine. I'll try and hide it a little bit. As soon as we pull the tops off, we'll go. All right. All set? Let's do it. All right, we got it. Let's make our reveals. Turn it around. You went, you went vertical. Went, yeah. All right, tell me your list. We got God first, obviously. Found it on, on the religion aspect. Like Freedom. That. I mean, red, white, and blue, it's all it represents, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's that's the whole base of America. I like it. Um, really, baseball. You, know, you baseball, baseball fan? Uh, kind of, sometimes. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. It's good. It depends on the day. Lost Pizza. Yeah, um, big fan. Can really, can really crush on that. And obviously, there's a bunch of pretty girls in America. That's so. completely accurate. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, they, they wrote entire songs about an American exactly. woman. That was just one. And it was one. Yeah. Think about it, they wrote for every one. Right. How a good time we'd have. You're making me feel bad about my list. Uh, I should really underline this one in a second. Yeah, I didn't necessarily, my, I have numbers, I didn't rank them. All right, so I went uh, Disney World, Okay. which yeah. I, I think like it's the happiest place on earth, yeah. and it happens to be in America. Dreams come true. Yeah, exactly. True. It's, it's magical. It's, it's wonderful. Um, Hawaiian shirts. That seems a little random now that I'm looking at your list, and I kind of regret putting it on no, there. No, that's American. I mean, but not, I mean, number I like, 50 I like, or 49? 49 or 50? Uh, it was one of the last two yeah, for sure. Last yeah, two. Um, we're, we're good at history yeah. as well here. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's why yeah, we, that's why. Pineapples, floral print, palm yeah. trees, surfing. There's a lot you know, of good stuff. Yeah, going on. Hawaii's great. Uh, Tex-Mex, man, that's my favorite food. Okay. That's, that's what I, mean, I like That's like my eat. lost pizza. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I'm kind of thinking about Taco Bell when I say that. Okay, I like that. But, like, I want tacos and quesadillas. Little dogs and that kind of stuff. Cheese dip, you know, like, all, all kind of good stuff. Um, what does that bottom one say? National Parks. Mm -hmm. I think National Parks are great. Like, Anyone that's, specifically? Or? Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Rocky Mountain National Park. Okay. That's one of my favorites. But um, I think they're all good, you know. Shout out to Teddy Roosevelt for, for helping us get all those in lockdown. Absolutely. It's a good man. Uh, and then finally, Bald Eagles. I, I think that's uh, yeah. that's a representation of pretty much everything on the list. You know, you got freedom, um, you know, flying through the skies, right. doing as you will, uh, the might and the power and the elegance of the Bald Eagle. Well, that's it. We, um, we love America here. We love yeah. mullets. 
We, um, I don't know what we're doing. Dude, I don't know. That was awkward, there. though. I'll feel it, though. That, that's we okay. That's what America's for. We have the freedom to be as awkward that's as right. we please. We don't have to handshake. We can have we great can. hair. We can have average hair. We can do whatever we want. All right, Cole Gordon, appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a blast getting to know you.